Recently, GRI released a number of important adjustments to the GRI standards. This was in line with our commitment to continuously update and improve the standards so that they represent global best practice in sustainability reporting. We wanted to make sure that they are fit for purpose and fit for the future. We called the release the 2021 update as it was launched in October 2021 with an effective date for the standards on the 1st of January 2023. This means that these standards need to be used for all reports published on or after the 1st of January. In this presentation, I will walk you through the most important changes in the 2021 update. The GRI standards remain a modular system of interconnected standards, and its parts have been designed to be used together so that a comprehensive overview is formed of the impacts that an organization has on the economy, the environment, and people. So the GRI standards now consist of three series of standards, universal standards, sector standards, and topic standards. The standards also have a new look and a new numbering system to identify them. The revised universal standards have a green cover with numbers 1, 2, and 3. The new sector standards have a brown cover with a two-digit number starting from 11 for the oil and gas sector standard. The adapted topic standards have a purple cover, but their numbers remain unchanged for now. This is reflecting the fact that there have been no changes to the disclosures in the topic standards, so the reporting requirements remain the same as before. The universal standards contain the across-the-board requirements and disclosures that any organization must comply with when reporting in accordance with the GRI standards. There are three universal standards, as there used to be, but their contents have been reorganized in a more logical way, which also makes them easier to use. GRI 1, Foundation, literally lays the foundation for reporting with the GRI standards. It explains the requirements for using the system. GRI 2, General Disclosures, contains disclosures for information about the reporting organization itself. And in GRI 3, Material Topics, we have consolidated everything related to materiality into one standard. It contains new guidance for determining the material topics, and there are three disclosures about how to report on them. The new sector standards have been introduced into the system to help increase the quality, completeness and consistency of reporting. The sector standards list the likely material topics for organizations that are active in a given sector or sectors, and they specify the disclosures that are relevant for reporting on each of the likely material topics. The first sector standard, published in 2021, was aimed at the oil and gas sectors. In 2022, two more sector standards were released, one for the coal sector and another for the agriculture, aquaculture and fishing sectors. All in all, the plan is to release 40 sector standards in the series over the next few years. And finally, there are now 31 topic standards in effect. They have been adapted to be used together with the revised universal and sector standards. They will be updated regularly and organizations will continue to use them according to the material topics they have identified. Next, let's look at the key revisions in the universal standards. The driver for revising the universal standards was to respond to recent developments in expectations about responsible business conduct for enterprises and other organizations. We wanted to make sure that the GRI standards were fully aligned with key intergovernmental instruments, such as issued by the United Nations and the OECD, and their guidance about due diligence and human rights. But we had also been receiving feedback from reporters and stakeholders since the GRI standards were first launched. The users were asking for greater clarity on the key concepts, such as materiality, on the reporting principles, and on a number of disclosures. We also wanted to take the opportunity to make changes that would encourage more consistent and relevant reporting. And we wanted to improve the usability of the GRI standards, in how the content was organized, the language used, and how the product had been designed. As a result, 
The GRI standards are now the first and only global reporting standards to enable an organization to fully respond to due diligence expectations in managing its sustainability impacts as set in the intergovernmental instruments. They also represent best practice in reporting on an organization's impacts by making it possible to address the impact materiality perspective of double materiality. And the standards allow to respond more adequately to regulatory developments. As always, the standards were revised in a transparent, multi-stakeholder process that was overseen by the Global Sustainability Standards Board, GRI's independent standard-setting body. Let's now look more closely at GRI 1 Foundation, which introduces the entire system of the GRI standards and explains how to use it. There have been three key revisions. First, we outlined the four key concepts that form the foundation for sustainability reporting with GRI, which are impact, material topics, due diligence and stakeholder. These concepts are defined from the perspective of impact materiality. GRI standards focus on the outwards impacts that organizations have on the economy, environment and people. We also adjusted the reporting principles, which now focus on the quality of the information and its presentation. These include principles such as clarity, accuracy, balance and comparability. And finally, we revised the approach to reporting in accordance with the GRI standards to replace the previous core and comprehensive options. There is now only one way of reporting in accordance. This is also in line with the approach taken by standard setters in general, where only one way of complying with the standards is the norm. However, the GRI standards still remains a flexible framework. An organization that cannot comply with the in accordance requirements or only wants to report on specific topics, for example, to comply with a specific regulation, still can use selected GRI standards and report with reference to them. GRI 2, General Disclosures, contains disclosures about the organization itself on its reporting practices, its activities, governance, strategy, policies, practices, and stakeholder engagement. These disclosures apply to all organizations, which means that all organizations using the standards need to report them. The information requested in these disclosures is important as it gives insight into the organization's profile and the scale of its activities and it helps by providing a context to understand the organization's impacts. There are new disclosures to report regarding an organization's policy commitments for responsible business conduct, including the commitment to respect human rights and to conduct due diligence. The disclosures also require reporting how these commitments are embedded across the organization and its business relationships. There is also a new disclosure on compliance with laws and regulations, which was previously addressed in the topic standards. It has been incorporated into the universal standards, as this is critical for understanding how an organization conducts itself in its operation. For the remaining disclosures in GRI 2, some have been revised for greater clarity and consistency, and they have also been aligned with key international instruments. We have published a mapping document on our website which explains the changes between the previous version and the new GRI 2. GRI 3 Material Topics now consolidates all the content related to materiality into one standard. In terms of revisions, we have made an adjustment to the approach to materiality. The focus has been slightly revised regarding the impact dimension. Previously, there were two criteria in determining the material topics in GRI, the significance of the impact and the influence on stakeholders. The focus is now on the significance of the impact. A topic is material when it represents the organization's most significant impacts on the economy, environment and people. Stakeholder engagement is still a necessary and critical input in identifying and assessing an organization's impacts but it is no longer a condition on its own. We have also developed step-by-step -step guidance for determining material topics. 
This was one of the most frequent requests we had received from our users. The guidance has been fully aligned with international expectations on responsible business conduct, due diligence and human rights. GRI 3 also contains revised disclosures for reporting the process that an organization has used in determining its material topics, the list of material topics and how it manages each of its material topics. The final disclosure in particular, the management of material topics, has been aligned more closely with the expectation of due diligence and it requires more specific information on the actions to prevent, mitigate and remediate negative impacts. All GRI topic standards have been adapted to ensure that they are compatible with the revised universal standards. However, importantly, the disclosures and the numbering have not changed and the information to be reported remains the same. Three topic standards were withdrawn because their contents were revised and integrated into the universal standards. These were topic standards on compliance and human rights assessment. Finally, to help you navigate the changes, we have developed a suite of resources that can be accessed on our website. These include the mapping tool I mentioned earlier, which shows the change in the disclosures between GRI Universal Standards 2021 and GRI Universal Standards 2016. A new content index tool that you can download on the website can help you prepare your content index. There are FAQs and new online trainings. All of this will make it easier to become familiar with the contents of the new GRI standards and help you start reporting using them after the effective date of January 2023.